Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's video, we will be solving a fun DEX puzzle and at the same time learning about TreeDS function. I will post the Power BI model used in this video on my blog. Look for the link in the description of the video. Before we jump into the puzzle, let me explain to you what the data set is like. As usual, I'm going to keep it very simple. Here we're just looking at two different tables. We're looking at the sales table and the prices table. So in the sales table, we only have four columns, date, customer. We have four customers, one, two, three, and four. We have three products, A, B, and C, and we have the sales amount. Then when you look into the sales table, uh, you're able to see the A, B, and C products. And then we see that A is priced at $1, B, two, C, three. And I did it on purpose just so that you guys can remember that C has a higher price than A, one, two, three, very simple. The puzzle given this data set is the following. In my, in my th third table, I call it customer. I wanna list all of the customers. And for each customer, I would like to know what was the highest price that this customer has ever paid. So for each customer, I need to look at all of the products that this customer has ever purchased look at the prices for those products and find the highest price that this customer has ever bought. To make things even more interesting, what you will see is that our two tables do not have a relationship created. So the sales table stands independent from the prices table. So let's take a look at how I implemented our calculation. And this is not the most optimal way to solve this puzzle. Uh, obviously, the only reason I created this puzzle is to talk about treat as function. So I think it's uh, good enough to solve the puzzle and also really good to explain and understand how treat as function works. The way we're going to do it is we're going to create a column, call it highest price paid. And now the logic is the following. This, because we're creating a new column, uh, that means that this logic is going to run one row at a time in our sales table. So for each row in a sales table, we need to take a note of who is the current customer in that row. Step two is we need to find all of the distinct products that this customer has ever purchased. And then we're going to use that table of distinct products to look into our prices and find the product that's in our distinct product table and find whichever the highest price is and then return that price. So that's all this calculation does. Let's go through all the steps. Step number one is trivial. We just create a variable called current customer and we're just saving the value of the current row customer in that variable. Technically, we don't have to do it, but I think that makes the code a little bit more self-documenting. Number two is we're going to create the table of all of the distinct products that this customer has ever purchased. So let's go through all the steps. Step number one, return a distinct list of everything in a sales product column. Because this is gonna go one t row at a time, then unless we do something with filtering, this function will only return one value for each row. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to use a filter function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all of the filters from the sales table, which means now at this point, we're able to see the entire sales table and now we're gonna filter that table only to the rows that, that meet this condition, where sales customer is equal to the current customer. So when this filter function has run, our sales table is shrunk to only those records where that belong to our customer. And now we can do the distinct list of all of the products that our customer has purchased. And we're using calculate table function because distinct does not return a single value or scalar value it returns a table. Therefore, instead of using calculate function, we're using calculate table function. And then at the end of this statement, we are done with our list. So products purchase variable will only have the products that this customer has ever bought. And now we're getting to the most important statement in this calculation. And that is, we're gonna talk about the treat as function. So if you have seen that function before or have read articles or videos or watched videos about this function, sometimes people talk about it as a virtual relationship. Being somewhat of a relationship expert, I could tell you that virtual relationships do not exist. You either have a relationship or you don't have a relationship. It's kind of like being pregnant. You're either pregnant or not pregnant. 
So I'm not thinking of treat as, as a virtual relationship function. I think of it more as a smart filter function. And the way that filter work is, it says for the second table or second column in my, in my list, apply a filter of all the values that you can find in the first table. So it uses table A, the start table, to filter table B, the target table. So if you know SQL, that's basically, you can think of it as a WHERE clause. If you don't know SQL, don't worry about it. Just think about, we have two tables. One table, we have the records that we approve and we want to apply, we want to filter the other table, the second table, only based on whatever records we can find in the first table. So that's what treat as does. It helps me filter my target table by whatever records I have in the source table. And in our case, we're only doing that match by one column. You see, we only have prices product and we only have one column in products purchased. You can do that match by more than one column, but because we're just beginners and we're trying to learn how treat as works, in our example, we're just gonna do a join by one column products. Okay, so now we can review our final return statement. So we're gonna go into our prices table and we're gonna find the maximum price in that table, but only use those records in the table where the product is matching to whatever products we have in our products purchased table. Now that we understand how our, how our calculation works, let's test it and see if it actually works correctly. So let's filter by one customer at a time and test. Customer one only has bought one product, therefore the price will be the price of that product, which is one for A. Customer two purchased two products, A and B, therefore we would expect the price of the most expensive product B, $2, to be in all rows, and that's what we see. And lastly, let's take a look at customer three. Customer three has purchased all three products, A, B, and C, so we would expect three to be in all of those rows. So it appears that our calculation works very well. So as a bonus, I wanted to show you how you might debug a calculation that uses tables in variables. So here we have a table of products that we store in this variable, purchased product, products purchased, and we wanna know whether our calculation here actually works. So how can we debug it? Well, there's several ways we could do it. We could return count rows against this table and then we would know at least how many rows um, are being returned. So if, if the customer bought one products only, then we would expect to see one row in this table. And if the customer bought three products, then count rows would return three. So we would not know exactly which of those products the customer bought, so we could not test the quality, but we could kind of do the quantitative test and see if at least it's returning the kind of counts that we would expect. Now, to make it a little bit more sophisticated, uh, we're gonna be using the concatenate x function, one of my favorite function. And that function allows us to examine the contents of our table, concatenate all of the rows into a single string, break them down by a delimiter, in our case, hyphen. And so we can see, take a peek inside of that table and see if the products that we are storing in this calculation are the correct ones. Concatenate x, we'll take a look at our variable. This is a table. It's gonna find the column that we would like to string together into a, a single string. And we need to specify the delimiter. So let's see if this calculation works as well. So we're gonna test it the same way. We're just gonna cut, filter one customer at a time and see if this works. So as we saw before, customer one only purchased one product. And here you go, come product A. So that seems legit. Customer two purchased two products, A and B, and that's what we see in the string, A and B. Customer three purchased three products, A, B, and C, and we see those products nicely concatenated into a string, A, B, and C. Customer four purchased products, A and C, and that's what we see in our debug column. So, so far, it appears that both of our calculations work perfectly. And lastly, what I've done was I added the highest price paid into our third table. I had to use an average of wave aggregation or mean max, doesn't matter. You don't wanna sum it because we have that repeated for many rows. And here you go, so we see the answer to our puzzle here in this table now. That's about it for today. I assume you guys are all now experts in treat as function and also experts in concatenate x function. Those are both awesome functions to know. 
and they come in handy in many instances, particularly when your model becomes a little bit more complicated. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm looking forward to seeing you back soon. Bye.